Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just stay on your feet. Just stay in the battle, Sister Joey. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Sometimes the battle is hard. It's rough, Sister Carolyn. Praise God. Sometimes you fight too many toenails. You wanted the phone still be standing at the end of the day. Praise God. But all you got to do, stand in his power. Stand in his mind. That's what he told me. He said, go in thy mind. Go in this thy mind. That's what he told him. Go and find him. I'll go with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What Moses told me, said, Lord, if you don't go with me, don't see me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But I don't know about you, but I'm persuaded. All this word that we've gotten around here, we got more than enough that it takes to stand. Praise God, the battle's going to come. The trial's going to come. That's what they're supposed to do. You know, when you, when you first, when a man is born in sin, praise God, we're born in shape and iniquity. Our trials come. Come to 
trying to make you give up before it's, before you break your time. Thank you, Lord, but don't give up, church. Keep on fighting. Keep on going. Thank you, Lord. I'm like that dream I had. Come on. Keep on going. Thank you, Jesus. In the dream, I was in a bad storm, Brother Brian. It was like a five, F5 tornado. It was like in the middle of the daytime, but it was pitched up. And the waves was coming so hard, I couldn't even see in front of me. The trees, that was like hundred year old trees. They bowed all the way down to the ground because the storm was so severe. And it was like in a dream, I just collapsed. And I gave up. I said, I can't. Thank you, Lord. That's what the devil does. He tries to come to you and tell you you can't make it. Thank you, Lord. But I collapsed in that dream. I said, I can't make it. The storm is too severe. It's too hard. I can't go on. But all of a sudden, Brother Brian, way on the other side of that storm, I begin to hear a voice that begin to say, just keep going. So dark, the 
rain was coming so hard. But I heard that voice leading to the other side. And it told me just keep going and I kept making a baby step. And the person that was on my back, it was a full grown man, it was a full grown person. Thank you Lord, I guess they may weigh up with 200 and something pounds. But because God has begun to speak to me, I picked him up like it wasn't nothing, Sister Barbara. And we begin to put him on my shoulder and we begin to go through that storm. We begin to take them steps, listening to that voice, going to the other side. And as I kept going, I just heard that voice. All he just said, Sister Joy, it was keep going. But it was the strength. Take 
souls out of his hand. He ain't gonna just go fishing while you snatch souls out of his kingdom. Thank you, Lord. That's why he's fighting. Because we're going somewhere he don't want us to go. Praise God. God is taking us somewhere in his kingdom that the devil don't want us to go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God spoke that to me. He said, our battles, the trials that we go through, he said that for us. They'll work things out of us. Thank you, Lord, that we can be made into his image. Thank you, Lord, but they're not to destroy us. They're not to break us. Thank you, Lord, because if the Lord wanted to destroy us, he could have got rid of me a long time ago. I promise you, a long time ago, Sister Mom, I'd have been gone. Thank you, Lord, but he said it's the Father's good pleasure. Thank you, Lord, to give unto us the kingdom. That's right, man. Thank you, Jesus. But he's told me. He said, but this Christ that's in us is the hope for the world. Thank you, Lord. And we know that. We know that we have what the world needs. Thank you, Lord. You may not ever have to say a word to them. Just live that life that's shining Jesus in front of them. They don't know what to walk when they see that light. That's what it spells off that darkness that's in their lives. They already know what they in is darkness. They know. Thank you, Jesus. But he told me that our trials and our battles there for us to work things out of us. Thank you, Lord, that we may be made like in his image. And become what God wants us to be. But you know what he told us? So what he told me? Thank you, Jesus. See that? But if we we struggle in ourselves with our own trials and our own personal battles, our own things we go through, he said the world can't see that. They can't see what you go through, Sister Carol, when you go and walk by the beginning and witness. Thank you, Lord. All they see is that, that light, that Jesus in you, that Christ in you. That's the hope of the world. That's all they see, Sister Barbara. So when we go through our battles, we go through our trials, they could care less what you're going through. All they could care about. Thank you, Lord. The world is dependent on what God is doing for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That apple tree. That's right. It ain't bearing apples for itself. Come on. Mr. Thank you, Lord. That, that orange tree it ain't bearing oranges for itself. All right, all right. Thank you, Lord. But it's bearing fruit for the world. It's bearing fruit that men can even reach up and live, reach up and eat that fruit out of our lives and live. Praise God. That apple tree. It may be God.
Thank you, Jesus. Man, I don't see if you see if you got the real fruit. Come on. Come on. I see if you'll be like James and John. Or Peter. Swing at his head. Thank you, Lord. Or James and John. Call fire down from heaven. Come on, Thank you, Lord. I ain't gonna say ain't felt like it a few times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for some of the, the real. If you got the real, it'll convict you and say, that's what I died for. Thank you, Lord. You realize if it hadn't been for Judas, he couldn't have sealed our salvation. Thank you, Lord. But he sold him. 30 pieces of silver, sold him. Thank you, Lord. Led, led him off to his prayer ground and kissed him. Thank you, Lord. Say, the one I kiss, that's the one. Lead him away. Thank you, Lord. But when he came, Jesus still, it was Peter the one that was finna cut his head off. Peter. It was Peter finna get him. Thank you, Lord. But Jesus didn't. He said, friend, he still called him friend. Dressed out the son of man with a kiss. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And in one place he told him the cup that my father's giving me, shall I drink it? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, man, but she, she really put me through some stuff, Sister Barbara. I went on and I had to pray. And I had to really pray and keep my spirit right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It don't mean that you ain't healed because you'll go through stuff, but hit your knees. Go back to the altar. Go back and say, God, I need help. I need you to help me, Lord. Sometimes that's the only way that trash is going to come to the top. If that jug gets shook up, thank you, Lord. But when it comes to the top, you'll be dipping off. You don't know what's all down inside of you. I guarantee it's still some more stuff that God has got to work out of us. God is still getting all of this mess out of us. Thank you, Lord. But them hot trials, the hot fire, the troubles you go through, it brings it to the top.
can't say anything outward. Thank you, Lord, but I have plenty to pray about inward. Thank you, Lord, but the Lord said, come right back to me. She fell into some things. Some things started going, going, going on around her. And she was, she knew she had put me through so much. She didn't want to call me. She just sent me a text message. She said, I really need you to pray for me. Such and such and such has happened. When I first, when I first saw the message, it was a Sunday morning. I never will forget it. I was praying, trying to get my mind on the service, trying to get prepared for, to come to service. But when I got that text message, I felt some kind of way. Thank you, Lord. The first thing the flesh wants to say, remember what they put you through. Remember the problems that, they, that you had with them. Thank you, Lord. And I thought about it. But the Spirit of God convicted me just for the thought of it, Sister Joanne. Thank you, Lord. And when he did, I began to bawl and sprawl. I never did say anything to her. She don't know it to this day. I began to bawl and sprawl and say, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Jesus. And I was, I was truly sorry for him. Thank you, Lord. I just even thought of not wanting to pray for somebody that's in, in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. I kind of felt like I wanted to call fire down from heaven rather than reach out a helping hand to help them. Thank you, Jesus. But when something like when the Spirit of God convicts you, thank you, Lord. It'll change your whole attitude. He didn't, the Lord didn't say one word to me. He just convicted me with his spirit. Thank you, Lord. I begin to fall and sprawl like I probably, I probably wouldn't even, I probably would have just said a simple prayer and just went on. Thank you, Lord. But I begin to bawl and squall and really pray. Pray for her knee because the Spirit of God convicted me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I went on and I prayed and I went on and I forgot about it and went on to church. Come on now. I got another text message probably later on that day or maybe the next day. She told me within, she told me, she said, God listens to you. She said, within 10 minutes of when you prayed, God moved in that situation, just turned it all the way around, and she never had that problem again. Thank you, Lord. So you see, you don't ever, you don't ever know. They may put you through something, but it may be for their saving, and they don't even know it. Thank you, Lord. It may be for their salvation, and they don't even know it. Thank you, Lord, for those, he said, had they known, they wouldn't even crucify the Lord of glory. When they put them down, Tell me. 
She said, I begin to take, she said, I, I'm taking my children to church now. And she's coming in, she's just uh, smiling, proud. Thank you, Lord. Next thing you know, Sister Bob, she come in and said, I'm going to church now. Thank you, Lord. And she come back in and said, well, the preacher preached on this. Right. Thank you, Lord. So you don't ever know. Thank you, Lord, why God has got you somewhere. Just be faithful where God has got you. Don't let your trials discourage you. Don't let what they put you through. Don't let it make you quit reaching out to them. Don't let it make you turn your back on them. Amen. They start swinging at the head. Thank you, Lord. You let God take care of what he wants to take care of. Praise God, because he may not want you. He may not want to swing at the head. He may just want to shake the jump up out of you. And give you a chance to get yourself right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. May she come back in. I was in the I was in the, I heard her. I heard her telling somebody they was asking about how our weekend was. She said, well, because they do, they party every weekend. I don't think it's one weekend I hear about them not party. All right. <clears throat> Come on. Now ain't talking about no little bitty stuff. <laughs> Thank on. you, Lord. Come on. Man, I ain't going to say it. Thank you, Jesus. When she come back and she was talking about it, she said, well, we went out there to the island. Everybody was out there getting drunk. She said, well, I felt bad being out there. Man, she she just go to a little little church, nothing like the word that we hear. Thank you, Lord. But it's the Spirit of God and the real Spirit of God dealing with her. I don't care what church you go to, when the real Spirit of God gets a hold to you, it don't matter what church you go to, God will reveal the rest of it to you. But if you want the real, God will give you the real, and then He'll lead you the rest of the way where you need to go. Thank you, Lord. Man, it blessed me so good. I, I wait till she finished talking to him, and I said. What is that you said? She said, well, I went out there and they was partying and they was drinking and cussing, but I didn't feel right about being out there, so I went to the house.
Thank you, Lord. That's what it's about. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And we do have the hope of the world. We come in here to get strength. We come in here to get the word, to get something from God. Thank you, Jesus. But it's to go out and take it to that dying man. Dying that dying soul. That dying sinner. That's right. That needs help. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I remember. I used to drive for Uber years ago. My family didn't like it. They, they feared for my safety, I guess. That's the love of the Lord. That's I really enjoy it. I, I work from midnight to daylight or 10 o'clock or whatever from night to morning. Sometimes I drive all night. And I, I, it didn't really bother me. I, I really wasn't, I wasn't really fearful. But I met this person. I was thinking, I was just thinking about how God, you don't even know why God's got you so much, but I picked up this man. It was him and some of his friends. I picked him up, named him down, tell him I'll and take him way out to West Hill. But when I picked him up, I dropped some of his friends off, and he was the only one left in the car. And I, as we began to drive down the road, I always played my Christian music, played my gospel music. Thank you, Lord, if you try, try me. Thank you, Lord. So we don't want you to play what we want you to play. Uh-uh. Thank you, Lord. This is my vehicle. I did. I told one of them, he called himself, I don't know if he was an atheist or what he was. He called himself talking against the Bible. I stopped right in the middle of the street. I don't care if you are paying me your money. This is my vehicle, and if you're going to say that, you can get out right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't got to have your... Whatever you finna pay to get this ride, you can get out and find you another ride. I know that's all, amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Hey, on, Thank you, Jesus. I had him the bug a few times with this one man. Lord allowed me to reach a lot of people during that time. It really was a blessing to me. I, I know my mom and them, they fussed at me just about every day. You don't need to be out there. You doing this, you doing that. But them people out there, Man, they so hungry, I pick them up from the club. They be drunk, they be falling all over the place. But when you reach, when you're talking to them about the Lord, they just eat out your hand. They just eat that word up. I've had a lot of opportunities to minister to a lot of young folks going downtown in them clubs, going down there to, to do things. I talk to them young ladies and talk to them about the Lord. Talk to them about giving their hearts to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. This, I was heading down there to take a bunch of college kids there and they was heading down to the downtown to the party. They said, well, we want you to play such and such. I said, no, I don't play that. I turned on them. I think it was our God, was his awesome God. Every last one of them in there began to sing and say, oh, we sung this at church Sunday. Oh, we sung that. They said, turn it up, turn it up. <laughs> I believe I will. Turn it up, Brother Brian. Man, here I'm coming, pulling up to the club, dropping them off, playing our God is an awesome God. And they all were saying it as they got out. I guarantee they night was ruined that night. Because I tell you, it's something about the conviction of God. You ain't going to get away from it. Thank you, Lord. I don't care what you try to do. But I, I went on and, and matter of fact, when I, that same night, I was getting ready to go and pick another load of them and take them home from the club. Some of them same children got out playing the same thing I was playing before I got them home. And she began to tell the other friends because a whole different group. She said, oh, she was out just the same age. She was playing the same song. I sang this song. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Man, so I, I tried to explain to my family, y'all don't worry about me out here. I'm, the Lord is working some things out for some folks. Yeah. Man, I had tracks in there. I, they get out and I'll slip them a track. Slide another track over here. Here you get one. All right, all right, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. But you got to do what God's got you doing, no matter where you're at. Thank you, Lord. I was getting ready to take this man on home after we dropped some of his friends off. And I began to witness to him about the Lord. And all of a sudden, he just began to bawl and squall and tell about all the things that he had went through. Some of the 
things that he had seen in his life. And I just listened to him for a little while. Sometimes they just need you to listen to him. They just want to get it out. And I just began to listen to him. And as he was telling me what was going on with him, I began to pray in my heart that God would touch him. Thank you, Jesus. And I, after he finished talking, he's just sitting there, he's just crying and bawling. I, I made the block a few times. He lived over here. I made the block, made another block, made another block. Thank you, Jesus, and kept on praying for him. And before he got ready to leave, I asked him, I said, well, can I pray with him? And he said, yes, ma'am, sure. And I began to pray with him and lead him to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what, though? During some of those times, Sister God, that was some of the greatest trials that I was going through and facing. But it was because the devil didn't want that word getting out there. Some of them people will never cross the path. They'll never step foot in the church. Some of these people out here, they'll never read a Bible. They'll never read a verse or a chapter of scripture out of the Bible. You may be the only Bible that they ever read. You may be the only church that they ever go to. That's why it's important when you go out there, leave the word. Leave it. Leave Jesus with them. Leave that fruit with them. Don't let them see the meanness come out of them. Just because we go through trials, sometimes trials do affect you in certain kind of ways. Because the human emotion tries to come out. Thank you, Lord. But what they really need is the Jesus inside of you. That's right. And he began to tell me by this time, it might have been about 4 o'clock. I think he started about 3. 3 in the, three in the morning. And I prayed for him, began to lead him to the Lord. I gave him a check. Told him if he didn't have a church home, invited him if he wanted to come. And Sister Barbara, he, he was crying so hard. Thank you, Jesus. And he just said, well, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and go. He said, but can I just give you a hug? He just, I said, sure. I reached over her. He snotted all over my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But you don't ever know why. Thank you, Lord. Trials are tough. They're hard. I ain't gonna never tell you they easy because they ain't. Thank you, Lord, but it's for your making. So that the real Jesus can come out of you. That diamond can't shine from what I've heard until it's been cut. Thank you, Jesus. Certain things can't come out of certain things until it's been crushed. Thank you, Lord. He's got to crush that flesh out of us. He's got to cut out.
Philippians 4. Thank you, Jesus. Back up to verse 3. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate y'all for what he did in the revival. Amen. Great revival. Let's keep our pastor and his wife and the people that travel with him in prayer. Amen. It takes a lot of strength to do what they're doing. That's right. Thank you, Lord, while we lay at home in our beds. Thank you, Jesus. They are laboring for the gospel. So let's remember them in prayer. They'll be going to Collinsville May the 27th. They'll be no start going through the power on Friday. I think they're supposed to be taking the tent up there maybe at the end of this week. <clears throat> so let's, let's definitely keep them in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to skip them down to verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. But listen to this verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death, Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Thank you, Lord, that death, that the trials, Cause of our flesh to die and works life in somebody else. That apple that's hanging on that tree going through that storm. Thank you, Lord. Is to give life to somebody else. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. <coughs> And therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us also, raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might prove the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause, in verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen or eternal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that just speaks for us. Our life afflictions. Thank you, Lord. Like God always said, He's measuring it upside heaven. The trials that we go through, it ain't even going to be compared to when we get on the streets of gold. Every tear is going to be wiped from our eyes. Thank you, Lord. So keep going. Thank you, Lord. I admonish you. Just keep going. Storm don't last always. Every storm blows out. Thank you, Lord. Me and Brother Reed preached a couple of Sundays ago up in McIntosh. Man, it just did something for me. Thank you, Lord. He began to say how after a storm has passed over, how they 
fly over and survey the damage of the storm. Thank you, Jesus. And he began to say that God is beginning to survey the, the damage that the storm has done in the people's lives. And that he's going to begin the recovery. Thank you, Lord. He began to tell us from that day forth that he's going to begin the recovery. All that the storm has left damaged in the lives of the people. Thank you, Jesus. Man, it would be so good if you could go back and listen to that. I'll put it on YouTube, on Brother Reed's channel. Will the Reed Revivals on May the 1st. God began to tell us that he's fixing to begin the recovery, that the storm damage is left in the lives of the people. I believe it. Thank you, Lord. The storm can't last always. Man, it's been some bad storms, and they all overnight, just one night can leave enough damage for a year. Come on, say it. Thank you, Jesus. But like you begin to say, but you begin to get out there, clean up the debris, put the windows back in, cut down all the trees. You begin the recovery process. Thank you, Lord, so life can go on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're going to do. We're going to begin the recovery process and life can go on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord. Let's just let's just come to the altar for a few minutes. We got a few minutes. Thank you, Lord.